we have got a bit of a wood storage problem. Um, I don't know if you remember, but this tree had to come down because it fell down and then the rest of it had to come down, otherwise it was gonna squash the honesty shop. So we now have absolutely stacks and stacks of wood that needs to be stored somewhere, otherwise it's all just gonna rot. Um, and we really want it for the next couple of years for kindling. So this really all needs a bit of a tidy up around here. Um, it just all just looks like a total dog's breakfast. And um, there's piles of wood here, piles of wood in the back, piles of wood here. So we are thinking of creating some sort of wood store here-ish. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm sure we can do it. Okay, well, let's get the... Well, I think let's just start levelling it all out and getting the base done. Yeah. So Brian's just going to mow this section so we can see what we're doing. We would normally use the ride-on, but it's in having a service. Okay, so we've had a bit of a change of plan. We've decided to make this a basically a 2.4 meter square. So we'll have to kind of shuffle these out a little bit. It just works better for not having to faff about cutting ply basically. So we're using these brackets, we just got them off Amazon that just will make it nice and square for us. Um, save faffing about. It's all about the lack of faff. Indeed. I've decided to take over the drilling and the screw because Brian keeps trying to put screws down my bomb crack. This is the base framework that we've just knocked up. This is literally how it's going to be. We're going to lay all of these longer pieces of wood along the bottom so nothing's going to fall through it's long enough that we can just lay that all the bottom and then lay the rounds on the top. So now we're just, it's a bit bigger than we'd originally done our base because it's two, basically 2.4 meters square. So we're just trying to kind of get that level. Um, and then we need to kind of spread these planings out and just level it, move them about a bit. Should be all good. So we think we have leveled our blocks in the same sort of space as that is gonna be. Uh, now we're just gonna lift the framework on and see if we are right or not. <laughs> so we're just working out how many extra noggins that we need to put into our base here given the amount of weight that we're going to be putting in here i think it's going to need quite a few more so we're leaving the floor with the hole so that the airflow can come up through and dry the wood out and so these two trees were taken down this year and so they won't be ready for most probably another at least a year or so and then we can start splitting it and then using it on the glamp site for wood so we've finished doing all the base and putting all the extra bits in to make it nice and strong and now we need to work out the angles. So, yeah. so what we've done is we've measured the length of this and that comes out at 250 centimetres. So what we need to do is we're going to work in right angle triangles. So we know that half of that is 1 metre 25. So we, I use this one here just on the internet. It's a right angle triangle calculator. And what I do is I know that we're using spans of 2 metres 40. Uh, piece of wood and so from that I can then work out the length to the 90 degrees up that'll then give me the angle from there to there and it turns out that this bottom angle here A needs to be 58 and a half degrees which we'll chop on the miter saw and then we know that the top one up here needs to be 31 and a half degrees so that one plus that one plus the 90 degrees up there should give us 180 degree angle in total which is the triangle cool so yeah Let's get chopping and hope that it works. 
to get this angle of 59 degrees that we want in this corner, we have to set the chop saw to 31 degrees um, and cut these all at 31 degrees. So when we put that up there, that's going to give a 59 degree angle. Um, and then we'll cut the other end to 59 degrees, which will give the 31 degree angle. There you go. All fun and games. Now this is the other fun part of angles. In order to cut the other end as a 59 degree, um, we need to, obviously the chop saw doesn't go up to 59 degrees. So we need to cut a 45 degree angle, which Brian's doing now. Okay, so here we've got the 45 degree angle. We've set this to 14 degrees so that this is going to make a 31 degree cut, which it, you can use this handy dandy gadget to tell you the, that you've got it right, basically. And then when that up there is at 31 degrees, then the angle void will be the 59 which will make you the triangle so having cut it we've got that one on the end there and we come up and i'm quite happy with that it's no gap there and if we come down on this side yep that's at the end there as well would you believe it mathematics worked <laughs> So we've got our basic framework up. We've used these brackets. Um, they're just flat brackets that we got off Amazon um, just to kind of reinforce and pull them all straight. Um, and now we're just doing these extra beams just to tie them all in together. So we're gonna do three on each side. You can now sort of see the structure of this um, A-frame log store. Uh, but we've run out of 4B2 now, so we have to go down to Wix. Two by four, surely. As I said, in America it's 2x4, in Somerset it's 4x2. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is that why everybody thinks that we're American and <laughs> here in England? I'm going to start calling it 4x2. No, yeah, 4x2, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be fair, you've got such a muddled accent that really you could be anywhere in the world. Well, pretty much. Lived in Canada, Ascension Island, Tenerife, England, South Africa. And that's kind of why you like the A-frame, isn't it? Because of your connection with Canada and um, you like the kind of American style of houses. I just think it's a really great structure. Very simple, nice clean geometric lines. Fantastic structure. So we're just about to put the sterling board on the sides now. Um, so we've measured these to 120 so that we can, we've got plenty of places to screw them in. Um, so I'm gonna try and get it in place. There, but my foot's already damaged from when we dropped the base on it. No, it's not work. <laughs> so not surprisingly, somewhere on the line that we've gone slightly wrong is then we should have had this slightly lower down so that we haven't got this overhanging bit. Um, I wanted to take it off and start again. Brian was like, nah, we'll just chop it off. Yeah, just run a saw on the top. So, I'll put the other board up there and then it'll have a much smoother finish because it'll butt up against it. Just run the saw along the top and then you can plaid over the top. Or yeah, anyway, it never, it never goes to plan. So yeah, we're going to get the other two boards on and then we can also do the cladding at the back as well. Now this I think is a nice log house. This, this is a, we had quite a few comments on our A-frame cabin. Which is a home office, not to live in. Um, that it's a really nice house for a dog. Um, somebody else said nice for two legged, -legged dogs. Yeah, no. Uh, whatever. That's a dog house. Actually, it's not a look, it's a log store. That's a home office. Yeah? Got it? So, we're going to do the cladding that goes in the back here. We're kind of replicating the six by one castle boarding that we did on the A frame, but we're going to leave air gaps. So, we're not going to overlap, we're just going to leave gaps just to let the air circulate through so the dogs don't rot out. Okay, and now the moment of truth. Let's see if it fits. Oh, that's not too bad. That's all right. This is turning into an absolute nightmare. The angle is so steep that we can't chop it on the chop saw, or at least we can't figure out how to chop it on the chop saw. So we no, end it's up. It's just not long enough. Otherwise, we could. Okay, the chop saw doesn't give enough long enough, whatever. So, so we're, we're the having point. to cut it with the circular saw down there we keep getting it wrong like we've measured that too small the angles aren't like perfect 
but it is a log store let's not panic so we finished all the cladding we're leaving gaps to let the air flow through and we're just putting a bit of trim at the bottom like we did with the cabin so that it sort of neatens it up and ties it in and then we can paint this the same grey as we did that so um thank goodness this cladding is only finished it wasn't as bad as we thought once we'd done the first angle we could just use that as a template and then run it along with the um circular saw so it wasn't too bad um we just had a bit of a block on it so now we've got that done that's really good and then we can just stick the roofing felt on this morning we're going to finish off felting the roof so we did this side as a practice because we have never felted a roof before believe it or not um and now we're going to show you how we did it uh, rightly or wrongly but we just literally follow the instructions so we've got the this roofing felt adhesive which you have to paint on it's like really thick gloopy stuff um, and then you have to leave it 15 minutes to get tacky and then we've just got normal green shed felt um, to just lay on and we've done it like this so that the rainwater will nicely run off and not get underneath so uh, let's get painting shall we So it's really, really, really gloopy. I think probably that'll be the end of that paintbrush by the time we finish with this. So I think it will be. Um, I'm sure there must be an easy way to do this, but I'm not sure. Well, a bigger paintbrush, I, roller. I suppose we should have watched the YouTube video on how to do this. But yeah, so don't necessarily take what we're doing as gospel because you know we don't really do what we're doing half the time. Brian is testing out a technique which um, <laughs> is actually, I think, creating more mess for himself. I mean, I don't mind, I'm clean. Um, but he is now completely covered in this uh, tarry stuff. So, paintbrush roller, possibly not a book, block of wood, but if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments because we love to read all your comments about um, suggestions. How not to do things. How not to do things. Um, how we could do these things better. And, you know, for the benefit of other people who might be watching this, um, read the comments because there should be, hopefully, some better insights but at the same time don't just say you've done it wrong if you're going to say you've done it wrong please tell us how we could have done it better because then we learn from it <laughs> um can you tell we're slightly bitter about the uh the a-frame comments uh feel free to go back and look at the video and uh read the comments <laughs> so it's all covered brian's technique actually worked quite well of the spreading with the wood so yeah all good um so we've left it at 15 minutes and now we're just going to um, lay out the roofing felt. So it is now all roofed and basically ready to have its logs put in it. So we've got all this kind of usable space here. We're going to stack all the logs up and um, hopefully get rid of our gigantic piles that are everywhere. How are you doing in there, Vicky? I thought the hard part was building this thing. I thought the hard part is putting the freaking logs away. Well, I think we need to split them. But we don't have a log splitter. Mm. Well, we're going to have to split them at some point, whether that be now or in the future. I know. It would stuck a hell of a lot better if they were all split. Oh, no. Okay, whatever you think. <laughs> you look broken. Yeah, I'm like disgusting. I need to go get changed. Oh, dear. So it's a Saturday night and we're really excited because we just bought a new log splitter because um, we need to try and fill up this blooming log store and it's not working with the massive rounds. So we just spent the last, I don't know, hour and a half uh, building the thing, lost. which was a bit of a nightmare. But um, the results are pretty good. Stay. Stand back please William. Easy peasy, just, yeah, like, just like that. that. So now we're going to split all those logs. Well, not now because it's like, I don't know what time. Um, we're going to split all the logs so they're much easier to put into the log store. Oh, that is big. Okay. <laughs> How do you know how you can carry that? Well, I don't know out. how far I'm taking this Oh, wow. 
good. Splitter, aka Brian, and this handy dandy gadget has meant we can now have a massive pile which we should be able to just then stack in a bit neater and fill in all the kind of gaps. Um, so yeah, that's about what, a quarter? I'd say about a quarter. Yeah. And this has pretty much taken me, it's really about three hours solid. Yeah, so we've got a lot more to do, but we can do it gradually. Well, this is it. As long as we can get the, the bulk in now of this, and then we'll just keep bringing stuff over. I can even take the splitter to where the stuff is and then just put it straight into the tractor bucket. Yeah. And then we can bring it over here, dump it. But yeah. True. I think it'll be a work in progress over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And then imagine when this is all filled up with beautiful... Ah! <laughs> yeah, laugh it up. <laughs> Uh, imagine when this is all filled up with beautiful logs. Um, It'll be a big bug hotel. Yeah, that's fine. The bugs are going to love it. Yeah, and the mice is fine. But at least we will have wood for the winter. Well, it's wood for the glamping. Oh, it's so. actually wood for the summer, tree. Yeah. <laughs> days and days and days splitting logs it's not quite full up yet but we're getting there um you get the gist so we're going to try and fill it all the way up but it's amazing actually how much this log store can hold i was a bit surprised i know lots of you will be saying oh why don't you just build it with straight sides so it's square so you could fit more in but it's purely for aesthetics for us it's to build an a-frame that matches our cabin build um if you want to watch cabin build the video is here and if you liked what you see please like and subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you again soon